Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hello, everybody. Ruben Bressler. What is going on? Really busy, active news week. We'd better get to it quick. We have so much. So much to talk so about this much week. To talk about. We well, can't possibly delay. Yeah, not even a little bit. Um, so, first pick tonight, and of course, we also get started with our giveaway, of course. Oh, yes. A $50 gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com. Type exclamation mark raffle in the chat for your chance to win. You subscribe first, though, even with Bezos Bucks, to get two chances to win. Double the chances. And we've seen multiple people subscribe and then go enter, enter to win and then win. So that's great. Double is a theme this week. Double is quite the theme, let me tell you. <laughs> First pick is Double Masters is happening right now. Double Masters oh, is yeah. being previewed right now. Double Masters is the most expensive thing Wizards has ever made on a mass scale. For example, you get like the, the Mythic Editions or the whatever the yeah. Thornville Drain thing was for five or six hundred bucks. But on a, this is going to game stores, this is going to be available on your Amazons and whatnot. And, um, we have we have some really cool stuff going on in Double Masters. Uh, for example, when you get the VIP edition, which they're going to talk a lot about for a variety of reasons, um, you get a set of full art lands, for mm. example. So, and these would be the unhinged lands from John right. Avon. Uh, you also get the Battle for Zendikar full <laughs> art lands from Noah Bradley, but they oh, unfortunately. Good. Can't they're not they're not really going to showcase and or market the <laughs> the, the, the thing with those, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, Wizards this week was more or less all about hey, it's VIP edition time. Double Masters is cool. The box toppers are sweet, but you know you can only get the box toppers in foil mm. in these hundred dollar packs. Let me tell you. Right. And uh, we had some confusion when trying to explain what was going to come in a VIP edition booster. This is essentially this is a 35 card booster pack everybody. Two of those cards are foil tokens, so you get 33 cards. So, with 8 foil uncommons and 9 foil commons, along with 10 full art basic lands and 2 foil full art basic lands, again those will be from the 10, either the Noah Bradley or the John Avon, there's going to be 2 random foils, you don't know what you're going to get. And then beyond that, you're going to get 2 foil borderless cards, found only in VIP edition, and two foil rares or mythics. Okay. And these are the foil rares or mythics that have also been upgraded. For example, there is a really sweet expedition map now. And right. I'll, I'll get that on the screen here in just a second so you guys can see. But what do you guys think about Wizards taking a very Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh-esque way of doing things, which is, yes, you can get an expedition map for probably a couple bucks because it's going to be pretty right. common. But yeah. you could pay 50 bucks and get this really sweet <clears throat> version. Why don't I too much to say about the finance aspect. Um, I do think the set as a whole feels very hastily put together where, you know, you have these sort of erratas that have come out of, you know, the first tweet that was like, you know, in publishing the contents, you know, we erred when describing the contents of the two foil borderless cards. While they are marked as rare or mythic, eight of those cards are popular, powerful cards found in other rarities. That's a big thing to omit, or that's a big right. thing to get wrong. Um, Alexis Jansen, former Wizards employee, is, you know, seen immediately below that tweet of, you know, people rush to pre-order this product based on misleading info. Like, that's a big deal. Um, and then you have the other tweet that was talking about the, um, you know, the rarity differences or, or how common some of these things are going to be. You know, they, these are two really big mistakes to leave out of a set. And it makes me feel like, you know, the left hand really didn't know what the right hand was doing. I think they even caught Morrow or, or maybe it was Gavin. Somebody was like, we needed to put a set out. And so it's it's like, oh, so you just threw this thing together to meet your quota? Like, it just doesn't have the polish or, you know, the smooth layout that you right. know, we usually expect from Wizards. 
yeah, I this this does feel a little slapdash. Mm-hmm. Uh, the announcement, at least, of it. Um, there's a lot of misinformation going around. It just seems like it. What the the announcement and the rollout was hastily put together. Mm-hmm. If not, you know, the set probably wasn't like Even that. The first always day, goes through. I think the, yeah, you exactly. Called them out where it was like, you know, here's Champion of Lambolt, and it's like, this is what you yeah, led the parade well, with, like, right? <laughs> yeah, like I don't like I understand that Wizards wants a certain number of people. <laughs> you know, every day to have some previews. But when you're at the very beginning, and also yeah. when you're at the very end, don't you tree of redemption us, wizards. Right. Don't do that. But when you're at the very beginning, the first... Make us a, make us a sandwich, right? Make us like a parade. You know, something like and make sure that they're the first ones out. If I see the champion yeah. of Lamholt and the Grim Lava Mancer and your $2 yeah. rares in your $100 booster right. packs, that's terrible. You're they nice buried Lux Cannon in the middle of the previews. <laughs> that's a good one to bury. That's, that's what you should have done with champion right. of Lamholt. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and then these things can happen. Can. Right. And, you know, like, and spoiler seasons are different difficult to kind of gauge and what's going to be the most you know exciting thing right. versus not but who boy uh, wizards i think has learned lessons from I'm, the tree of redemption debacle oh yeah for sure yeah. i think that um, so there are good things about this i mean for one thing these box topper arts for the most part are, are spectacular the i mean the exploration's unreal. That adorable doubling season that came out pretty much immediately. The mana crypt that was out immediately. Council's the sort of judgment. Com- yep, Council's judgment's another great one. This this comic book blight steel colossus is <laughs> gorgeous. Um, they did a lot of good stuff with the art direction in this set for sure. A lot of uh, old school artists coming back, like Mark yeah. Sugg, uh, Mark Tadian. Um, yeah, I mean then Thomas. Our Baxa. Discord's our our Discord's favorite Thomas Baxa. Thomas yep. Baxa, who we haven't seen in ages. Like this is this is what we want to see, um, and I think Evan, you'd also mentioned the demand for old frames, where it was like you know somebody took the new Urza lands and was like, can you imagine new art in the old frame? Yeah, uh, people would have lost their minds. And I the- uh, and so you know some people were like, look, you know the frame is more than just artwork; it has functionality because it's got right. the set name and the number in the mm-hmm. bottom left and the copyright yep. information and yada yada. And I totally understand that. So whatever they can do. To make it the most old school they can, even if it has yeah. a hollow foil, even if you got to have the word in or whatever down there, like, let's do that because yeah. people love those old treatments. This is nostalgia 101. Just give Particularly them what they used to have. Particularly people who wouldn't normally care about your product. And yeah. as we've seen over the last couple of years, Wizards has really been going after the new blood lately. And so, right. you know, if, if the goal is to bring people to your game or to your, to your product who wouldn't normally care about it, you know, you know, if you put full art in there, someone's going to buy it. You know, you know yeah. that. But, and you to know, that end, sorry. No, I'm just saying, but using old frames would bring in like the rich shays and, you know, the right. people that wouldn't normally deign to buy a, a new frame or to buy a pack of magic would absolutely put down some cash for that. Right. It is nice that they gave the Tron players uh, a million, th- <laughs> you know, upgrades to give to their Tron decks. Masters. Right? <laughs> Tron Masters. Tron Masters, essentially. You've got 12 Tron lands, you've got Expedition Map, and you've got Karn Liberated giving yeah. the I see this as an absolute win Artifacts face. Artifacts in general have had a big week. You know, Sharoom, Trinisphere, which had never been yeah. reprinted before. Like... Yeah, Transphere has not been Jeepers. reprinted except mm-hmm. in like uh, was it from the, the vault the inter- or something. The invention, right. intervent, um. and the inventions, yeah, from <laughs> Kalash. Yeah. So the the interventions, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a totally the different. The consternations, card. Um, yeah, yeah, got it. The contractions or something. Got the it. inebriations, yeah, uh-huh. those were great. I loved those when they came out in. Mm-hmm. I love intervention. Well, uh, there, there, there's also so when we start to see things like these box toppers are absolutely incredible, and you look at things like a hundred dollar booster pack, mm-hmm. and let's just let's not be weird about it. We're gambling at this point. Yeah, of course. We're straight, literal, putting money in the machine, pulling the thing. You know, you're getting some amount of something, and we hope it's a good one. And when you have the highs of the noble hierarchs and whatnot, and even the expedition maps, like these things are going to be very expensive. Sure. And you know, the, this was a, a video that that uh, I think Rudy had said something about this, which was he was like, "Wait, maybe VIP edition is underpriced. That a hundred dollar booster pack is actually it should be worth more, because again." 
Wizards is juicing the living crap out of this set. Even just now, we are on such a trajectory for this to be way better than Ultimate Masters. Sure. Like, this is the stuff, buy a booster box, throw it in your closet. Right. Let's buy a car in 10 or 15 years, all right? Like, just leave it alone. Just go buy something and stick it somewhere, and that's fine. I do a lot of that with the Secret Lair stuff. Like, I got the Godzilla Lands one, just going in the closet somewhere. Of course. Because I'm of two minds on on that idea. On the one hand, first of all, these are 35 card packs, right? 35 card packs, yes. Uh, that we're talking about being $100. So we're not talking about a regular booster pack of 14 cards plus a token. That's right. Uh, by the way, no tokens in these packs, which I thought was an, an interesting choice. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's two full tokens in the VIP. Oh, edition. are there? Yes. In the VIP edition, but yes. in the regular I mean, it, packs, it's easy to lose track. I, I'm with you. Really. Yeah. Trust me. In the regular, in, in the in the VIP edition, you get the VIP tokens, but in the regular edition, there are no tokens, right? Right. So okay. you have to basically so, imagine that if these foil commons and foil uncommons and the lands. And the foil lands, by the way. Yeah. If you imagine that those are just worth a buck, right? If you just yeah, say those at are least. a dollar. At least. At least. Yeah. So you're saying bottom, bottom, a dollar right. for every one of those cards, right? So okay. you're at 20 something, you know what, you're at $29 or so, let's say 30 bucks. Probably. I would say you're at 30 bucks. You're at 30 bucks, right? So you get four bites at some really nice apples for <laughs> For 60 bucks. bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for. Okay. Yeah. For like Plus the box topper. Well, that, well, we're talking if you're buying a booster box. I'm talking about oh, the if VIP you're just buying edition. a booster box. I'm talking about just gotcha. the VIP edition packs. Hmm. This is the idea. Essentially, is that you're kind of paying twenty ish yeah. dollars per one of those rares. Yeah, I mean, this is like going down to the VFW and buying a scratcher, right? Like this is, or, or like you pop it open. It's like, oh, I want five bucks. Give me five more scratchers, Bob. Um, I, I went to college near the plains <laughs> in Ohio. You got to forgive me. Nice. Uh, but the point is that you know that it is close. You, it is just a higher scale right. of it. Rather Rather than opening a $3 booster pack hoping to get a $20 card, right. you're now opening a $20 booster pack, a $50 booster pack, a $100 booster pack, and hoping to recoup. Exactly. So, but that's how it, that's how magic is, man. Like, right. Magic is in a really weird space. Like we're not in like because in many ways you could look at stuff like FIFA and NBA 2K and whatever and say, look, those are you know pay to win mechanics that you're opening these booster packs full of players that have better stats than the other players, and you go, wait a minute, we're opening packs of game pieces, and some of those right. game pieces are better, have better rates, have better mana costs, whatever it is based on their rarity themselves. Yeah, we're nowhere near the Skinner wear problem that uh, that Richard Garfield uh, was worried might exist, mm-hmm. um, where there's no cap. You know, you, you've got these people who are addicted to their phone apps and spending tens of thousands of dollars a year to get extra, you know, seeds for their farm or whatever. <laughs> right. That's not what we're talking about right. here. There is value in these cards. And more than that, it's physical, tangible value that you can hold in your hand. It is cardboard, but it's not a digital object. And right. so, you know, magic cards are worth what people will pay for them. And we've said on this show many times, we haven't hit the upper ceiling yet. And we're tr- we're poking at the ceiling with our, you know, the end of the broom every single, every single time we come out with a new one of these sets. We had Ultimate Masters, we had, you know, this there's more on the horizon surely um you know so i'm i'm not i'm not horrendously offended by the hundred dollar price um i'm just but, uh, yeah I, know. I think it's sort of the the explanation oh by the way they, they uh, reprinted the filter lands um yeah which is really cool <laughs> um they needed those just I a think. thing yeah absolutely uh and even like even wrath of god was like a ten dollar rare like you mm-hmm. know some of these cards just need more copies of them but i think the, you know the true master stroke for this one is to take certain cards again we talked about expedition map but just to take very sort of staple cards a really good example would be cyclonic rift that yeah, extended Perfect. art foil is going every to every commander a, player like clutch yep. their wallet like at yep. least a hundred dollars like i mean i'm yep. just i'm just throwing out a number i'm just saying at least right so they're making Perfect. these cards even more valuable (coughs) giving them even more sort of high-end things you can open there's going to be somebody who opens the double foil mythic pack that's worth of you know 500 bucks or whatever um and again maybe one day we'll say you know what 100 bucks was actually kind of a deal for the stuff they're giving you in this set right so what what other cards like cyclonic rift 
can they put in? Can they? They probably can't do smothering tithe this quick, right? Not this quick, yeah. And, you know, they want to leave some gas in the tank. You know, I understand that's that That's true. Too. And they just they just came out with a new Ristic study, right? Um, in Jumpstart, hmm. right? So, yeah, I'm trying to think of like what other cool wild stuff they could do. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I mean, the like swords. chaos warp. <clears throat> yeah, the, the swords, swords are good. Are always, you the know, swords are still alive really as far as oh, I understand it. Lightning Greaves would be another lightning one they could Greaves, probably yeah. go back to that well, as there they always do. Yeah, exactly. The The idea that you create mythic versions of these sort of regular cards, which then gives you just another sort of spike that you can hit as a result of sure. in the pack. You know, Great. man, I'm not going to be excited as Expedition Map as a common, but man, I get that extended art. Whew. I'm, I'm all about it, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, and Skithrix got a reprint. Goodness Skittles. gracious. Yeah. Oh, Skittles, man. They was getting like mm-hmm. a 50-something plus dollars. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just so hard to reprint that card, you know, just anywhere. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what other cards see play. Let me pull up EDH Rec real quick. How many Masters Editions have had Thespian Stage, Dark Depths, and Vampire Hex Mage? Are we yeah. at two, nice. maybe three And they still now? have a decent price tag, too. Yep. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Anguished Unmaking. That's a good one. They could put that in this set. I keep an eye on the Dark Depths lands because uh, Vintage Dredge sometimes has a Dark Depths sideboard. And I've sure. never pulled the trigger and bought the cards before. But every time they reprint it, I'm like, should I get a place set? And they're yeah. still call, like, not affordable. <laughs> call Aaron when we get promo Borderless Box Topper Bazaar of Baghdads. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not happening thanks to the reserve list. Well, yeah, I mean, we get to have exploration come back for that's the first with time. Doran just on it because why not? Which is dope. Because sure, that, that sounds great. I love that art and the, the extended, cyclonic rift and the and the exploration are my two favorites. Yes, the exploration art, uh, and I'm going to try to get it up here on the screen here in just a second. Um, but that artwork sold for thirty thousand dollars. Did it really? The extended art version of exploration did wow that's a pretty penny let me tell you get those coins really who did that piece uh, Mark Poole. Uh, Mark Poole? Very Mark nice. Poole. All right, nice. I'm putting it in the Mikesies for art of the year. Oh, yeah. It's very, very good. And um, uh, Doran wasn't in the exploration. Was he not? Oh, no. He was in the regular, uh, in the crop yeah, rotation, the, the not the exploration. The rotation. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Might the, be. I got to be honest, though. I hate that crop rotation art. Well. It's just, it's just like your perfect. opinion, man. <laughs> so, exploration of the new copy, the new art is on the screen now. It is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, exploration already just this version of what a twenty-seven something dollars. Mm-hmm. The extended art isn't even priced yet. Yeah, a lot Looks of like green that. staples in Commander have skyrocketed. I was I was on Shivam's podcast a couple weeks ago, and we were joking about how one of my first Commander decks was an Omnath Locus of Mana deck that I built for fifty dollars total. I've tried to go back and rebuild that deck, and I can't build it for. $50 sure. <laughs> there's, there's some funny still, kind of like, like budget EDH articles that you go back to yeah. and you go, dude, that was yeah. no, that yeah. was not. I'll probably end up building a Shrines EDH deck. Listen, my just boyfriend just put together Corona with Shrines and he wrecked us yesterday. Love it. Like he's got the yeah. impetuses, he's got the Shrines. That sounds great. I, and times. I have somewhere in my stuff, I still have a French, French foil replenish oh boy. somewhere in my in my catacombs Your of things <laughs> in my hoard in my warrens that I call my room that I tried to get rid of multiple times and no one would take off my hands oh, wow. and I'll put it in the shrines deck because okay. why not Wow. All right. So let's move on here to Gather the Townsfolk, where uh, we're going to keep talking a little bit about uh, Gen Con Online. Mm -hmm. Gen Con Online is coming July 20, no, July 30th, I believe it's through August 2nd. I don't need to double check that. Um, But they have Pastimes, which who's been running all the events at Gen Con, um, is doing something, you know, that you can do sort of digitally. And this includes Mm -hmm. the ability to play events in what basically any form you have the ability to do arena you have the ability to do mm-hmm. magic online <clears throat> yeah and that's uh, a lot of these events have ported over from gen con gen con has always offered this sort of champs event where you can win um you know uncut foil uh you know printing sets and of cards yeah. yeah exactly and so you can do a lot of the same events here uh there's online cubes there's an arena championship jumpstart is available um but the thing that i'm most excited about is the legacy and vintage events um they are teaming up with 
Magic Online to give you God accounts um, so that you can play wow. in those legacy and vintage events. Um, and for those who don't know, a God account is an account with four of every card. Um, the accounts that we get when we play in the Super Leagues and things like that. Um, and those accounts do not have restrictions on them. Um, mm. God accounts in the past have not allowed you to play in leagues or, or preliminaries or things like that. You can only really play in like the tournament practice room. And uh, one of the organizers, Meg, uh, Meg Baum, um, hopped into the Vintage Discord and answered some questions. And she confirmed that um, as of the time of that discussion, if you sign up for one of these legacy or vintage events, you get that God account for so many days and you can take that account with you anywhere you want to go. And so, wow. um, you know, you will have the ability to play with cards that you've never dreamed of playing with before, like a Recall or Moxin or Talarian Academy. You can do it um, and, and have that account for, for a couple days. That's really cool. That is really cool. They're also doing uh, spell table stuff. You can mm -hmm. play live magic. Standard. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, they're doing the best they can to do Gen Con at mm -hmm. home. Yeah. Um, on the D&D side of things, hello Dungeons and Dragons, um, I'm doing uh, a panel and a live show. Uh, if you want to tune into that, I, I recently, oh, no. I'm sure my co-hosts love this. I brought up, uh, the mythic odysseys of Theros, which is out yesterday. I think, mm -hmm. um, pick this up at geeky tees in Burbank, California, support your friendly local game store. Um, where uh, I'll be running my Broken Pact players through uh, the introductory adventure of Mythic Odysseys of Theros. And then I'll be having a Games Masters, a GM's discussion on Sunday morning uh, with a bunch of the Saving Throw GMs. Uh, myself, Stephen Pope, Jordan Caves Kellerman, and a bunch of the other folks. Wow. Yeah, this um, you basically have different packages, and I've got them on screen here. You guys can check it out. Um, for example, for 100 bucks, you have the uh, Gen Con Online Plus package, which includes two Magic Convention promos, which I believe was the... Um, Ooh. That was the four-mana Flash creature last year. Um, the four-mana 4-4 four, four that makes a 2-2 two, two at the end of your turn if you don't play a creature. Oh, or, Night Wolf. The Night, Night Wolf something or other. Night Pack Ambusher. That's there you the one. go. Thank you. Um, a uh, deck box, a set of sleeve, a package of basic lands, two welcome boosters, two welcome decks, a collectible magic pin, and a free Jink on Online TCG size playmat. Mm -hmm. uh, which, as I understand it, is featuring the Ugin from the showcase artwork of Magic 2021, oh, which boy. is pretty dope. Uh, the Command Zone package for 100 bucks gets you foil soul ring promo, which is pretty cool. Uh, two non-foil soul ring promos. Um, you can still get the promo, wow. the regular Magic Convention one, the pin, and the free soul ring art TCG-sized playmat, which is really sweet, and you play those on Spell Table. Hmm. Uh, for the most diehard, you can go 200 bucks. Sure. All the way in. Get you a bunch of uh, play set of convention promos, four of those, three core 2021 boosters, a deck box, set of sleeves, a package of lands, two boosters, two bet and welcome decks, a collectible magic pan, and a free PhD size play mat. And then event entries into the, uh, including the physical packs to play where necessary um, for non mystery booster drafts. Um, yeah. One booster seal, one mystery booster sealed event, which is cool. One jumpstart event and sealed event. Um, right. So those are things. The wizard. Oh, sorry. Pack There's packs. a limit on some of these though, so it might be too late for you to go pick them up yourselves. But there are limited to like 100 or, or 150 packages, depending on sort of what we're talking about. Um, and these are going to be run through sort of the way that we've been doing organized play lately, which is usually through Discord and uh, the mtgmelee.gg or whatever. Um, so the ability for them to kind of keep track of this, be able to give you uh, the Ugin playmats. There's an extended version that you can get if you pay the, for the last package here um, and includes event entries into six Magic Arena or Magic Online events, which is really right. sweet. Yeah, I'm glad these were available. I mean, Gen Con is a, a big part of a lot of people's year. They oh, want to yeah. spend money and go to do these things. And so giving them the opportunity right. to get some of these collectibles... And Even if you can't be how, there, how quickly this was thrown together, you know, I mean, Gen Con, yeah. the official cancellation was what, two months ago? About that, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. to throw together all of this in two months is pretty impressive. And they're still working yeah. on it, too. And, you know, kudos to them on the customer service aspect. I I literally mentioned this in the Dredge Discord, like on the, or the, the Vintage Discord. I got up in the morning, like I rolled over, and all I said was, I don't, I don't know. Like this, this, this looks like a lot. I don't get it. Bam! There was a judge in the chat. She's like, "Hi, I'm Meg Bomb. I'm organizing the event. What can I help you with?" And I was just like, <laughs> I, 
I was like, all Did I did say I the magic breathed, word. I breathe. It was like Bloody Mary or Beetlejuice. I simply <laughs> breathed that I had questions. Nice. And then before I knew it, there was another one in my DMs that was like, so would you be interested in giving away some codes? And I was just like, what the hell? Like, are there bugs in my apartment? <laughs> like, right. Goodness on? gracious. <laughs> They're on it. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. I mean, this is one of those things that is difficult to kind of manage because you're dealing with sort of various platforms, different <clears throat> games, basically, of Magic Online and Magic Arena. Um, right. But, you know, there are going to be specials and things happening during sort of Gen Con Online, even cool stuff, who is an exhibitor. All the exhibitors have the ability to sort of showcase online stuff, and hmm. we're going to be doing that along with everybody else. So things like special deals and sales and stuff like that are going to be happening, uh, as well as new product being made available. Uh, the, the whole industry is kind of doing this weird, like, they want to release products, but how do you release the products to get them shipped sooner than later? Right. What warehouses do they need to be at? Like, you get into, like, a logistical nightmare kind of yeah. thing because yeah. there's been a bunch of releases that have been announced for an August you know release which to me is always just Gen Con um, so no matter what it was and there were some big game publishers who were really banking on a really sure. sweet August to happen because honestly that's, that's what right. all these publishers do well, I mean, you know, a lot of the 2020 promos that would have been given out this weekend in San Diego and then next weekend in Gen Con and the rest of the summer aren't going to be out in the world. Yeah. And so being able to get those Nightpack ambushers and Soul Rings and Ugin Playmats out to the people who would have otherwise wanted them regardless uh, is kudos to the people that were able to put scrounge all this together and sort of improv on their feet. Yeah. So uh, this coming weekend... There is going to be the PT Finals, streamed on July 25th through 26th, followed by the Top 8 Playoff August 1st, which is interesting. Um, Hooray! PT Finals! Yay! Yay! That'll be that's for this for a quarter million dollars, as I understand it. This is this is the big sure. big. Um, yeah, this is the big one. Yeah. This is the 16 player event, right? I don't. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm, I'm unaware. <laughs> Wizards has changed so many things. I do know that if your favorite streamer is involved, they ain't going to be streaming it. Wizards well, is not allowing them to stream. Is that correct? They Am can only. They can't stream the final. Can't stream our gameplay from the Pro Tour final. Oh, so that's the event. The Pro that's Tour the final. I thought it meant just like the finals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can't stream our gameplay. Yeah, they used to be able to because I think Mebo streamed last time. Right. She streamed like her last couple rounds there. And, huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then the Magic account says, we understand your desire to share your finals experience with the community. We mm -hmm. encourage you to record your gameplay and do a walkthrough. Hmm, I wonder yep. what the reason is for that. Is there, like, a good reason? Tape well, delay. I mean... I, right, I think they're actually are canning some of it, as I understand it. That, yeah. Um, okay. I don't know exactly how much. I mean, the reason why to do it not live is because, you know, even if you put your game on a delay you can still have a card in your hand from half an hour ago. And it also did so, make, I mean, now that I think about it, it did lead to a bit of an awkward experience because you knew how, if you were watching the streamer, you knew how the game was going to end on the official account because I was watching Ali's finals. And so, yeah, it, it made it really awkward where it was like, so maybe it's that, you know? I don't know. All I know is that I understand, you know, that if they want to can all of it and create sort of a sort of a highlights reel and or like a, you know, build the buzz in the program how they want, that's fine. Um, it's just a little odd in today's like streamer, streamer centric world. Everything must be streamed. We must all hang out while you're doing this And that stuff. can be a huge boon to a streamer, too. Like being able to put that in your title, like playing in the finals or like top eight competitor, like that can lead to a huge boost in viewership, which can, you know, translate to more followers and more subs. And so, you know, not being able to get that exposure, um, you know, could be could be a little detrimental. Right. Yeah. I mean, usually with these events, they're like, you know, five to ten minute delay is fine. But, you know, again, I also understand there's a lot of money involved. Um, and we just want to make sure this happens the way they want it to happen. And that's fine, too. So we got uh, we also got the broadcast teams uh, or the broadcast team, I should say. Sure. Um, and uh, bringing back to Quan Watson and Monty Davuti uh, as uh, notable second op second chance players or uh, uh, commentators. Very I'm nice. glad that they're keeping them on board and not referencing Elid Loney as alias V using her actual name for the first time <laughs> as far as I'm aware yeah that's a good point I actually haven't noticed them not say alias V for all of her uh yeah. Or, uh, so, violence. but the commentary team. I mean, everybody's everybody loves the commentary. Uh, you know, Paul and Cedric and Maria and all the folks are are great. So, 
So, Aaron, tell me about a very special GoFundMe. Yeah, so there is a GoFundMe that's been going around this week uh, for a young lady named Angie. Uh, Angie is or was the Southwest Regional Coordinator for the judge community. I did not personally know her, so I apologize for not knowing her current status in terms of her role within the program. Um, She has been fighting cancer for some time. Um, It's my understanding, based on reading this, that there was an initial GoFundMe that was meant to help for to help cover the medical costs um, and. Unfortunately, um, her fight with cancer is not going very well, um, and she has now transitioned into basically hospice care, which is like Mm end-of-life care. Um, So the GoFundMe is still active. The money is still going to go to medical bills, but they're also looking to establish trust funds for her children because she has two small children, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and to cover any sort of, you know, funeral expenses. And so uh, they've raised 17000 so far um, towards their goal of 30000 She seems to have been a beloved member of the community, um, and so if you have a couple bucks to spare, you know, we understand there are a lot of things that require your time and money right now. But if you can spare even a little bit, um, you know, please you know, kick in something towards this. I'll probably be donating something soon myself because this is really just um, sad all around. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate to hear, of course, and particularly, you know, uh, for me having kids and knowing the kids at that age and how important it is for me <clears> to be <throat> available to them. And it's. You know, it's just heartbreaking stuff. I got to share the link in the chat. The link is in the show notes if you want to take a look at that and uh, pitch in if you can. All right. So let's move on here to Desperate Ravings. Now, these box topper images are super duper sweet. Um, Fantastic. (laughs) But one little tiny thing i'm gonna bring it up on here on the screen so you guys can see it it i didn't notice it either i didn't either i had no idea until it was apparently you know a thing or whatever um so i said fine so let's take a look (laughs) now the idea is that they brought back mark to dean who was one of the original artists of the urza tron Mm -hmm. lands um Mm -hmm. and he's he did all three of them for the box topper extended art stuff and he did karn in a you know very much what was the Hulk saying you know the, uh, I see this as an absolute win it is an absolute <laughs> win of a Karn everybody it's an absolute absolute win so bring this up here and so we're like hey the panorama was really cool and then someone said you zoom it in and you take yeah. a look yeah, right there on the right Eep. Uh, Karn, it was so close. You guys were so, so close. But if it had been the, zoomed out just a hair. The people who really love this, though, are, are going to get it regardless. And it's my oh, understanding yeah. that the there's prints of the panorama, right? And those aren't affected. Oh, I would hope they wouldn't be messed up. Okay. I, I would not. doubt um, that the, yeah. Yeah, the I mean, this is are. really great. I mean, even Tadeen had a great attitude about it because people were really, people really had their claws out for the Karn. And mm-hmm. he was just like, Karn's happy to be out of Phyrexia. And like, to yeah. be able to take that kind of criticism and stride, you know, good on you, Mark Tadine. Yeah, Yeah, the panorama looks really good, actually. The full thing, I want this as a play mat. This looks fantastic. Yeah, I've got the full panorama on the screen now, and you can take a look at it, and again, just the the, the beauty of the colors and Mm -hmm. what he did with it. I'll take my Come with me, and you'll see a world of nothing but machination. Wow. Goodness gracious, because that is that's a good good card. EDH Redcast, thank you so much for rating. Welcome Ooh, to hey. Cast, everybody. Hey, thank boys. you. It's Dana and Joey and Matt. Well, that was very nice of them. As we discuss a weird thing that Wizards is doing. Well, uh, I mean, okay. like we said, we see it as an absolute win. So, all right, here's where we are. Wilderness Reclamation. <laughs> oh boy, is a terrible. <laughs> magic card. And I don't mean terrible as in it's not any good because it's yeah. too good. It's yeah. terrible in that we've lived with it this long. It has done nothing. Can you call it positive? Has it done no. anything good? It's created a bunch of weird scenarios. It creates a, an entire UI issue with Magic Arena where you have to be in full control all the time and even then sometimes it screws up and not to mention Magic Online. And so um, why is the free spell that gives you an early harvest every turn 
okay. We're still we're still with this. We have tournament results from this past weekend, which is just it's just awful. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's one mono red deck and everything else reclamation deck. I can't understand. Thank thank God for Sandy Dog holding yeah. down the fort with <laughs> runaway Steamkins. Yeah, you remember when the three of us were like, I don't know if exploration or or uh, expansion explosion is that good. Yeah. I don't know if that'll see play. And then it turns out uh, we accidentally the doubling our mana. Yeah, they there was a mono white deck too. Uh, Hoshi there was Yuki. a mono white. Uh, mono sure. white yeah. A white weaning deck with raise the alarm. Uh, Basri solidarity. Basri solidarity. Loxodon. Yep. Um, selfless. The the pup. Um, yeah, there was puppy. also the cat there too, and you know they went twelve zero and two with this, like and they're in the Red Bull tournament. So <laughs> I would play that deck. That deck looks great. Make the, planes the playable. Great. Yeah, I, I, I just, have no interest in playing Reclamation. I it's just yeah. some of the most flaccid magic I've ever seen. Yeah, um, I hate that people are trying to make it a thing in other formats where it's just like it's just it's just awful. Like we are to the point where people are main decking Wilt. Um, remember when I was playing a standard deck that was main decking Veil of Summer? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're to that point again That's with gross. Reclamation, and it's not great. Like this weekend, you have a quarter million dollar event and a format I don't want anything to do with. Like, yeah. like if they had said, you know what, surprise, Reclamation's banned for this event, I'd be pretty interested because we clearly have an aggro yeah. set over here, and maybe we have a really cool control deck that just isn't as good as getting double your mana every turn, the initial cost is free, and then it's double from there on. I, what, yeah. what were they, they banned, thinking? They banned Frantic Search, and they banned Peregrine Drake, and they banned Time Spiral in multiple formats, and yet, yeah, this one somehow sneaks through. I don't know. Yeah. It is a little bit miserable. Um, um, I mean, the play patterns are very similar. Is the other big thing? Um, yeah, and I you just, know, and that's that's typically what gets things banned. Right. It's just the fact that you know the, the whatever loop it's got is very powerful. I don't know. Maybe its win rate is not as high as we think it is. But the problem is that you, we're, we're in a perception problem, which is any event worth its salt at this point is just reclamation everywhere. Mm-hmm. What do you want us to say or feel at that point? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's also just, it's it's very, it's the summer, you know, summertime, you know, True. that's usually when Wizards gives you the, okay, okay, you little monsters, you can have two or three months of all your toys, right. and then we're going to take them away from you. So, you know, to, um, to some extent, I'm not surprised that they haven't done anything, I'm because, even... you know, we are Think so close about, to rotation, but... Um, I want to know what the future, future league looked like at this point, <laughs> where they had Oko, Oko and Fires, and Winota, once upon and a time. Once Upon a Time, and Vale. <laughs> Of summer and uh, agent of treachery and mm. companions, companions working that were nor- nerfed. Oh like, my god! What did this format look like? What were they doing? I don't understand. It had to have been absolutely fascinating. I just with the cat combo in the middle of it, right? Like, yeah, cat combo and growth spiral still existing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. Absolutely incredible. Well, <laughs> and everything sucks. News. Everything sucks. We have the first half of this year saw about around 123 hobby stores closing. Uh, Aaron, you counted up how many again? I counted over 20 that attributed the pandemic to the reason why they closed. Um, and that's terrifying. I counted 29, uh, unless somebody sees something I didn't. Um, you know, this is really the, the nightmare scenario for me. You know, I'm one of those people that loves the gathering. You know, I love paper magic. I have no desire to see magic. Magic turn into nothing but arena pods where we're tied to our computers and we don't go outside. Like that's not something I'm interested in. You know, I want to travel to events. I want to. I want car rides. I want to physically hold cards. I want to go to my game store and buy a little Debbie and and eat while I play Commander. Like those are. That's the gathering to me. And so mm-hmm. to see just this in memoriam of over a hundred stores and, you know, at least 29 that are closed due to recent events, um, is a really, really big bummer. And this is, these are, this is worldwide. These are stores in Canada. These are stores in America. Um, it, it's just not looking good for stores. There's even some UK stores in here. Like, um, yeah. LGSs are dying and it's, it's really sad and very scary. Yeah. You got to support your friendly local game stores uh, it, when you can. Um, you know, a lot of stores now are offering curbside pickup. 
um, please check and make sure that your local game store uh, is able to uh, accommodate that. And when you can, uh, do your best to get your comic books and your magic cards and your Dungeons & Dragons products from local stores instead of the big box retailers um, because, uh, you know, it's, the, it's just the right thing to do. We just not going to have any left. Right. The, right. The, basically, the, the, the concept is that it is so unbelievably important to run events for local game stores. Mm -hmm. It's how yeah. they make most of their money. Like, yeah, singles are cool and all, but when you get people in the store buying those singles, buying a pack because why not, right? Let's open it up and see what we got. Let's do a pack war, right? Let's just hang out. Right. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. Let's buy some of that. Let's hang out and do another event. Oh, look, that's a cool board game over there. Like, all of that I stuff mean, ties in together, and they can't do that at all. Seats, look yeah. at Jumpstart right now. How much would store be killing it killing. on just people showing up to your local game store and being like, let's do a jump start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some in the chat, God bless them, and they said, you know, their LGS died without a fight as soon as the lockdowns hit because, man, some of them are just yeah. living on a prayer, essentially, of, yeah. man, I hope we get a, a good month, right? And we can, we right. can make all the ends meet, and that's really difficult. Right. Exactly, and it's not, it's not obviously not just local game stores, obviously, right. in this whole uh, <laughs> epidemic of epi epic proportions, Certainly. but your friendly local game stores their margins were super slim to begin with and they need support now it's just it's rough and i mean you know uh, some some of the larger you know chains can adjust things to to make it work you know cool stuff's making it work hey i still have a job uh thanks perfect but you know uh, and still supporting the show which is also great right um but you know again this is because the supply has just been chaos like when stuff shows up stuff's been delayed till whenever can sure. you imagine trying to get pre-ordering something like the commander thing green and then they, they don't even exist when it comes out because it got delayed till near the end of the year like we're we're in the weird time period so the better you can support the, the, the better you should um, and I know Wizards is taking initiatives to have stores uh, run online events so check your right. local game stores you know Facebook page and Twitter and whatnot absolutely to uh, make sure that you're participating in the FNM at home stuff uh, through them because the Wizards certainly cares about those types of metrics um, and also that you know you're participating in a, an online event or two because uh, you know even even in CSI's looking stuff like that so yeah all right cool 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 with our slow news week. All right. We actually made it relatively far. Ooh, Hallie MTG, thank you so much for the raid party. Hey, oh, Hallie. Boy. We got, we got Former girlfriend now. bracket co-host. Wow. Friend. We have so many people for our hit show this <laughs> week. <laughs> we do. We do less awkward if you bitches if you, stop if you, talking about it. If you're just joining us, this is the largest week of Magic the Gathering news right. that anyone has ever had. Um, um, okay, yeah. so in Splash Damage, the Transformers TCG is dead. It is dead. It is dead, dead, dead. It is so dead, in fact, that their Twitter account says, read more at TransformersTCG.com. I, I thought it was just me. I have not gotten to that website ever since they said that. Not once. I've checked they multiple times. The they just said, we're done. Go home, GG. And remember, this is the same Transformers TCG that just had a very mythic edition type of release where you could spend, I think it was like 200 bucks, and they would send you a bunch of Transformers TCG Our stuff. Our Twitter account only had 3,000 followers. Like, wow. It's tough. It's it's crazy hard to make definitely a new TCG yeah. of any sort. Mm -hmm. um, I know they I mean, try the lifespan. Artists. The lifespan for TCGs is like two years, right? Usually. Like this is this is pretty much what the lifespan is, even when it's backed by Hasbro. Mm. Yeah. It is kind of the end again. We can't have offense. We can't have people in America, at least, because we no one can figure out what to do, even though it's right in front of their face. Like, we can't have those events, so you can't build anything. And there's other games that are just like, they're just hanging on. Dragon Ball Super is just hanging on. <laughs> like, there's no events for that game. It's still selling. The players still like it. And I'm sure there's lots of kitchen tables yeah. out there. But man, you start to see the Star I mean, Wars Destinies of the World and the... Uh, uh, things like this just fall I mean, the, the pandemic is going to take out businesses of all types, and games are no different. You're going to see a lot of game manufacturers fold, uh, TCGs go away, things like that too. So now I don't, I don't follow the esports world very closely. Right, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time in that. I don't watch a lot of events. I don't mm -hmm. really care that much, but. 
when Wizards puts a lot of money and focus on esports and esports, 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 and just he says, "Here, we're doing this now." So you have the Esports Observer, which yep. is you know a, a trade publication essentially, and they create the Games Impact Index per quarter. Every quarter they come in, they say there's three tiers. Last time we were in tier two, which is mm -hmm. fine, because tier one is League of Legends and CSGO. These are the no, two right, biggest games on the planet, yet. which is fine. But, you know, we're in the conversation, right? In tier two, we're not in tier two this time. And we're Weird. not in tier three this time. In fact, we're not on it at all. Which Magic Gathering Arena is gone from the Impact Index. We used to be at two with Hearthstone, which mm. is the one that's on our level. And we aren't even at three, which is where Legends of Runeterra premieres. Mm -hmm. uh, I was not aware that we were getting housed by Legends of Runeterra. We are, and I will tell you this, Legends of Runeterra just released their, uh, essentially sort of their, their season pass type stuff, mm -hmm. and the players calculated it. You essentially spend about 10 or $11 to get about 80 bucks worth of in-game stuff. Wow. For their for battle pass stuff, and uh, they are one of the most generous games that you can play online right yeah. now. Because honestly, Riot has a bunch of money. If they give you sure. some sweet value, yeah. who cares, man? They're the, bankrolled the, by ten cent. Like the go tweet, nuts. the tweet that I see here is Legends of Runeterra is new to the index, showing a larger player base than Hearthstone. Ooh. Hearthstone maintains Tier 2 due to its esports and tournament scene, which has always been their Ooh. strength. Right. Can we blame this on the pandemic? Is it Goodness gracious. Can we? Can we I'm now? asking. I don't can know. We, can we blame this on the pandemic? I think you kind of have to say someone's being chalked up there, right? Because there's just less visibility, less games being played. Sure. Wizards mm. is not doing a great job, I think, at explaining organized play, showcasing some of the players that they have, certainly trying to keep people on a roster like we talked about last week. Right. Who knows when that's happening? Um, so, yeah, this is just one of those things where you're like, this is a bad sign. I, just mm -hmm. want, I hope this is the, you know, I hope right. we're back on this next time. Because, again, if this is their goal, yeah. this is where you want to be. Mm -hmm. If Wizards' goal is esports and you're not on this, you're screwing it up. Yeah. So, like, let's not screw it up. All right. I think we made it, everybody. I think we made it all the way. What? The, Unless there was there something else you would like the, to discuss? Yes, the last topic here. Okay, go for okay. it. Okay. So uh, earlier uh, this week, I think it was, yes, it was late it was last week, week actually, yeah. um, the official PlayStation account uh, released a trailer uh, for a new video game called Gamer Girl. <laughs> Um, and it appears to be a first person or maybe like a third, I guess it is third person, right? So you, you play this game where you watch this streamer named Abby, um, and you get to be one of her mods. And so it's like this kind of choose your own adventure kind of aspect to it. Um, and you get to hang out with Abby. She takes you places. Um, you moderate her chat you become her friend. Um, and then at some point she has like an ex who's like not well <laughs> and then she confides is, in you because you're her mod and then is this real it was yes. real yeah, it, it was looks no. dystopian it looks yeah. absolutely and there's no like, way Abby this takes is her real friend to like a shipyard and there's like this the like Blair Witch kind of camera angles and it was just like every trope every cliche you could think of and um, it was just terrible it got roundly criticized around the internet and it was just one of those things that you thought had to be a joke but, um, you know, an actual video game company did produce this and, um, you know, they got somebody to be Abby and someone to be her friends. And um, it was just such a tone deaf thing to do where it's like, you know, I, women have been saying all along, like, you know, what is we happening? just want like some better storylines and we want to get away with like we want to get away from boob armor. And the video game companies are like, got it. So we're going to create a game where someone gets to control you and you may or may not die in the process. Like, oh <laughs> just not even listening to like the feedback. The hell it's just, is it's, happening in this... <laughs> I swear, it's like you couldn't make it up. It's like I kept waiting for like, wow, this is like the sickest parody I've ever seen. Yeah, right. And then they're like, all the logos coming up, and I'm like, really? Oh my god! And you see like the boyfriend shadow in the window as she's streaming. And like <laughs> Holy cow! I mean, it's mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. what in the world? Why? Just why? <laughs> this is like. 
The classic Aaron Y. <laughs> if this was Why? a joke, if this was a joke, it was neither funny nor well executed. Oh That's correct. And if That's it's correct. not a joke, it's worse. <laughs> So uh, feel, why is this and then, like, the company exist? tried to defend it they were like this game is about the impact user comments and actions have on a streamer's mental health and well-being um, this game was created to raise the issue of the toxic environment which can appear online I'm Gamer seeing Girls if my girlfriend is story in my... of a female streamer who with the help of her moderator friend battles the trolls and overcomes the characters oh, in her stream God. like <laughs> overcomes the characters <laughs> While you control this woman's actions? Stop it! Just stop! Just get off the train! Leave the station! We are finished! This is messed up! Stop it! All right, so turn the corner here to the finisher. Double Masters is soon on the horizon. The double pack jet, I'm sorry, the double pack set jumpstart is on Magic Arena, which is great. Hammers. And not, I know, right? And there's not one but two days of the PT finals coming this weekend in the year 2020. Two is the new one. So tell me, how are you looking forward to getting two scoops of goodness in the second half of this year, Ruben? Well, I love Jumpstart. I'm obsessed with my well-read goblins, my tree-hugging Lilianas, my rainbows in the clouds, to name a few combos I've had. So I'm hoping for a new installment soon, Double Jumpstart. Not only because I love the format, but also because then Magic the Gathering will finally get to be an Olympic event after that, thanks to Triple Jump Start. Wow. Wow. Aaron? Well, I'm looking forward to Command Fest at home in a couple of weeks. Jesus, what is time anymore? Goodness. Um, so I'm hopeful for Double Commander, because as much as I hate partner as a mechanic, I'm a little hopeful for a partner combo that I don't absolutely hate. It's true. I just can't. Partners are weird. I don't really understand the whole... I think I would like partner more commanders. if it meant you could pair any two commanders together, but be, it has to be the, from that sa- from that small pool, and I just right. don't just don't like it. Mm, well, let me tell you, I am hoping for a specific format change. An unban that we've been looking for and hoping for for a while now. It's time for the unbanning of Evan Ertwin. That's oh, right. Hey. Hey. Now, I, now I can't, I, I can imagine it. Like the, the two Evans, like back mm-hmm. to back. Like, back to back. Banned in multiple out. formats. <laughs> Hashtag five deceiver exarchs. Goodness gracious, that ends another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me and stay safe, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Ruben. Thank you. This was this was fun. Even in a slow news week, it's good to ch- check in and catch up. And we thank you so much for, for tuning in. You underestimate our ability to talk. Oh, we can gab <laughs> with the best of them. Don't, there don't for a you second, worry. We were like, wait, what are we going to do tonight? We're going to say I know. words? We're going to say a lot of words tonight. I we can. Yeah. I mean, it we like got to distract, you know? Just, we just got the, the the producer telling us to, you know, get to 45 <laughs> minutes. Like, let's. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much to move to our outro slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-hosts, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching or listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic. Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv, at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast Libsyn.com, or find us on iTunes or Spotify. Or just join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.